sports 100% reflected. Sometimes it's Raven. Sometimes it's other teams affected. Hold on tight. Strap in. It's going to get hectic. Couch Rider Report. An original sports perspective. Welcome back to the home of original sports perspective. From our couch to yours, this is your host, Jermaine Lockett. Thanks for coming back. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here with me, and I appreciate that. And I want you to keep coming back, folks. I can keep giving you that original sports perspective. So go ahead and hit that notification bell. Hit that like. Hit that subscribe. Not in that order, but just get it done so I can keep bringing you that original sports perspective. Today, I want to talk to you about the guys who who really hate hearing all this draft talk about Jamar Chase, about Jalen Waddle, about Terrace Marshall, Rashad Bateman, Diami Brown, all that. They hate hearing this talk, and they're going to use it as fuel to embarrass half the league next year. And I'm talking about guys that want to follow the path of those people like T.J. Hoosmanzada, Wes Welker, Derek Mason, for those Ravens fans, you know what I'm talking about, and Marquez Colston. These were like seventh round picks. I believe Mason was a fourth round pick. I believe Wes Welker was undrafted. These were some beasts out there who wanted to show up big time when there was a team that they saw that passed them on the board, and they did. They came out, they showed out, and they came and brought it big, folks. And I'm hoping that you see a couple of these players that I'm about to mention as someone with potential to be that person, to be that player, that to be that Mr. Go Get It. Because I'm looking at the tape and I see a couple of guys that have that potential to do that. So let's talk about them. There were a few of players that I just kept watching tape on and watching tape on and I was like, okay. But they didn't make my list. And I have one favorite, and I'm hoping maybe it's a personal bias because I was stationed in Wichita Falls previously, but I'm hoping that T.J. Vasher is one of those players that makes coaches play and makes them pay, makes teams pay for passing on them. Dude, 6'6", 215 pounds. Okay, he needs to eat. We get it. But he's out of Wichita Falls. He's one of those... Ryder Raiders, but then he became a Texas Tech Raider. And he blew it up. The man had 21 touchdowns in college. 21 touchdowns. And put his own name in a category of Texas Tech legends to include Wes Welker. That's why his name is brought up today. And some people think he has elite ball skills. Last water, last lap. Last word on sports, definitely believes he has elite ball skills. But he's not in the the overall list because I wanted to go with some names that just didn't leap off the tape to me or leap off the tape to everyone else, should I say. But they did kind of leap off the tape to me. First one is Frank Darby. This guy's out of Arizona. I, for some reason, I keep going back to Arizona every year. And I keep getting it wrong, to be honest. (laughs) Because this guy's like, what, Tim White that I was extremely high on. I was extremely high on to kill Harry, and we see how terrible that turned out. And I know there are people on Twitter right now saying, oh, man, he was totally on that bandwagon. Okay, I'm off of it now. I'm sorry that I that mentioned Nikhil Harry as being one of those guys. He's not. He's either got some growth to do or he's going to be out of the league, plain and simple. Anyway, back to Frank. So Frank is aggressive. He's shifty. He's agile. He's got decent size on him at 6'1", 200 pounds. But I want you to listen to this stat line. He has 67 catches, over 1,300 yards, and 13 touchdowns through his career. It's not dazzling numbers, but he got it done for the teammates. He's aggressive, folks. You need a player that's going to be aggressive on the outside as an X if they plan on getting, getting drafted. If you plan on making plays, you plan on moving those chains, You need that guy on the outside. Darby could be that guy. Next is Amir Smith. I'm hoping I say that name right. Out of Iowa. This Buckeye is 6'1", 179. He definitely needs to eat. It's uh, Amir Smith Marset, excuse me. And he likes that contact. 
He's a speed guy. He's physical. He's got a lot of wiggle. He makes the circus catches. Remember how Braylon Edwards made the circus catches but couldn't make the basic catches? I think the only issue with him is, from what I could see, even with all the wiggle, he didn't really create that much separation, but he just made things happen when that ball came his direction. Let's keep it moving, folks. We got an Indiana Hoosier. Hoosier. I'm working on these words. Hoosier. All right. Indiana Hoosier. His name Wop. <laughs> Wop Fillier. I want to call him Wop 2K because he had 2,000 yards in college. Had 12 touchdowns. He's a burner, but he sells his routes. And, but he's, his basic release is probably what's going to get him in trouble. He just he simply runs it. It's smooth. And y'all know how I am. If you ain't trying to put a move on somebody to get past them, then you're probably going to get jammed up the second you get to the next level because they cannot wait to get their hands on you. Jalen Ramsey kind of looks at this type of tape and licks his chops because he's like, hey, this guy's going to run straight into me and expose his chest, and I'm going to just simply usher him in the, in the direction that I want to usher this gentleman, and ain't a thing he can do about it. So he's got to work on his burst as far as off the line and the technique of getting past the defenders because most of the time he was just cruising past them because they played off coverage, and he needs to work on that ability to get off that line and get past the jam. Next person I wanted to talk about was a Memphis Tiger named DeMonte Coxie. This guy is 6'3", 200 pounds, great hands, yards after the catch is what I continue to see on this guy here. He's got some speed, and he positions his body constantly to catch the ball and to make something happen after the catch. Like I said, he's got that yak. He's one of those, I wouldn't say yak monsters, but... When he catches the ball, he definitely positions his body in a way that he's able to turn up field and make something big happen. He had a really fun play that looked similar to what Lamar Jackson does when he juked the guy close to the end zone after he caught the ball and then just simply walked in. It was fun. It was a fun watch. So y'all go back and see the tape on this guy. DeMonte Coxie out of Memphis. And then we're moving on to Ben Skowronek, probably in pronouncing his name terribly. He's probably going to chop me up all over the place for this. But dude, 6'3", 224, out of Notre Dame. Notre Dame has produced some decent stars. Clay Poole being one of them. Miles Boykin, still question mark, is still out there on this dude. Uh, you know, I say question mark, not question mark, yeah. Anyway, but it's still out there on this guy. But Ben, Ben has strong hands. Ben... Honestly, I feel like he should be a tight end in the NFL. He only caught five touchdowns in 2020, but he caught three of those in one game against Boston College. I think he would be a great tight end in the NFL because I don't think wide receiver is going to be a spot. He just doesn't have the speed to do that. All right, let's move forward. We have Brennan Eagles. I don't know, this is probably a familiar name for you Texas folks. He's out of Texas, 6'4", 229 pounds. He uses his body for the catches. I'm, I'm definitely a big fan of that for those people that position themselves to get the catch. He's that, not, not a breakaway speed type of guy, but he would be a red zone bully for sure. Like I said, 6'4", 229. Honestly, I see a little bit of Dez in him as far as the aggressiveness when it comes to climbing that ladder, going for the catch, and just simply using that size to make things happen. I wanted to see more of a complete route tree out of this guy, but most of this tape just shows him wide open. I'm like, what is going on? Are they just catching him, catching him on the play action, or it's just nobody dared bother covering him because maybe there was somebody else more dangerous on the other side of the field. And some of this tape maybe came when Devin DuVernay was there as well. So that probably left him open some of the time. But we want to see more complete tape on this guy. I'll continue to watch. Uh, Y'all watch too. Let me know in the comments if you see something on this gentleman. And then, like I said, going back to my guy, just a big fan of TJ Vassar. TJ Vassar was the Mr. Go Get It. He would go up for that ball, embarrass people, one-handed catch, didn't matter. It just kind of was playing. He was playing big boy ball. He said, big boy, I'm big boy, no little boy. Get him. That's what he does, folks. 
So those are the names I want you to take a look at. There are a few others, such as like Dwayne Eskridge, Demetrius Felton, Daz Newsome, uh, was it Simi Fajoko, and Donnie Crowley. I saw a couple of things out of nothing completely dazzling. You recognize a few of the other names, uh, but Diami Brown was definitely one of those folks who's he's gonna he's gonna soar when he gets that opportunity. It's just hopefully he doesn't get buried on the depth chart. The politics of being a wide receiver in the NFL late round they're tough. They are extremely tough because of the fact that the owners have went and spent this draft pick that is high on this gentleman here. Now, unless their game just leaps off the tape at practice, the coach is not going to let them start. But they, they have an opportunity there. If they're on the roster right now, all the way up until that first game, they got an opportunity to thrill someone and steal a roster spot. And I believe they can if they just do what they're supposed to do. Stack play on top of play and shock the world. Be the next TJ Huzmanzada. Be the next Derek Mason. Be the next Wes Welker, Marcus Colston, and many others who were late round picks that made it happen. Get out there and go get it, fellas. I wish you the best of luck come Thursday and through the weekend. Hopefully some team picks you up and you make it happen and make those other teams pay. This is Original Sports Perspective. From our couch to yours. Thanks for tuning in to the Couch Rider Report. I'm your host, Jermaine Lockett, and I want to say... Thanks for thanks for coming. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe. I'll see y'all around. Peace. Sports 100% reflective. Sometimes it's Raven. Sometimes it's other teams affected. Hold on tight. Strap in. It's going to get hectic. Couch Rider Report. An original sports perspective.